don't you just hate it when you're trying to paint your Space Marines in a grimdark style, but it just looks messy and dirty and ew. Well, after testing different techniques and different approaches for five years now, I finally figured out a real truth about grimdark. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make grimdark work on any army, some simple techniques that you can easily take to the next level, and finally, how all this will make you a better painter altogether. But first, we need to talk about the ultimate cheat code for painting Grim Dark. Five years ago, the channel Grim Dark Compendium made popular a product that made pretty easy to paint in the Grim Dark style. This product is nothing new, it's been used by historical modelers for decades, but only recently it was introduced to Wargamers. This product is Streaking Grime. If you don't know, which, what are you doing? It's an enamel paint that you just slap on either with a brush or airbrush, leave it for a while, and then take it off with a sponge or Q-tip or even your brush. Easy, right? And the results were super cool. And plus, it's up to the painter to decide how much effort they wanna put in, because it can be done with more or less attention to detail. But overall, a very good looking result. But there's a problem that's actually more dangerous than the Black Rage, or maybe not as much, but Still, you get the point. It works pretty damn well with lighter colors that also fit in with the brownish look of streaking grime, but it simply doesn't work on certain armies. Blood Angels, Black Templar, or, or any darker armored army. Armored army. How do you make black or darker colors look weathered? How do you create chipping on them? How do you highlight red without it looking pink? And how do you grime it up without it looking brown? Well, to answer all these questions, you need to start by learning this first technique. This is a very, very good alternative streaking grime, and it's easily scalable to display level, but it can also be used in a very simple manner, like I'm doing right here on this blood angel. Using an old big beat up brush, I'm starting to build up the layers on my Space Marine. The brush itself is gonna take care of creating nice patterns for you. You just let it do the work for you, slave. In my old Space Marine Grim Dark video, I did pretty much the same thing, but I can clearly see the color here is way too wet. You want to be able to control where the paint goes. You gotta be a control freak, okay? So this means you have to watch your dilution. And maybe you're wondering, but why not use a sponge? You are wondering, right? Well, the sponge just doesn't give you the same control. It absorbs more water in the brush. It's almost all the time way too bigger. You can use it on vehicles, that's great, but on Space Marines, that's way too small surface for the sponge to work. So I'd much rather use an old beta brush and let that do the work for me. Also, you gotta remember that with red, you cannot go over max saturation with your highlights. If you try to make red lighter, it will become pink, and we don't want pink. It's not like we are pink haters or, you know, fuck, I'm, I'm ranting. So we're gonna have to build up contrast by pushing this shadow instead. And a secret, making them desaturated. And where the bigger brush won't reach, I'll just pick up an older, beat up, smaller brush this time. The goal is simply just to build up texture. The technique itself, I would say it's a mix between like a dry brush and stippling. And once you feel more confident, you can drop the old bit of brush, pick up a detailed one and start building the texture yourself, Richard Gray style. These textured brush strokes work on any army, except for black. For this color, I would avoid this type of brush stroke but I would instead use the technique at number two. Just something that you can actually use in your everyday painting, and it's gonna play a huge role in the look of the final result. It's what's gonna transform you from beginner or intermediate painter to master. You can see both for my black and red, I don't place my brush stock randomly, but I instead follow the shapes of the model itself. For the black, I painted with flat 
layers. And the color I used was very, very, very close to black. In fact, so close to black that you can actually tell which part of the model you're painting while it's still wet. And that's the reason why I avoided textured brush strokes with black armor. Y you can't quite tell what you're doing and you don't want that. So maybe try it out when you feel more comfortable painting black or painting volumes or both. But where exactly do you place these highlights? Well, I have a full video on it. You can find it in the description, but also I created a PDF guide just for you because you are special on where you should place your highlights on your Space Marine. So you have a good starting point, which I think it could really be valuable to get you started painting volumes. So yeah, buy that, uh, please. I'm almost out of Red Bull. This is the last one actually. And I'm also very hungry. With the volumes on the black armor highlighted, you still have a teeny tiny problem. How do I make this black dark color armor look weathered. Well, the next technique is going to help you with that. Because at number three, we have something that's going to make pretty easy and fast choosing which color and which approach you should use for weathering any army. For weathering, we're used to use very dark colors like rhinoxide or something like that. Very dark, pretty desaturated as well. This doesn't show up on black. This doesn't work on black. So after hours and days and months and years of testing, I figure out a simple solution. Oxide, light rust, light ochres, grays, all the colors that can actually show up on your armor, all the colors that make the model seem like it's living in that ugly and dystopian world. When I want to create streaks, the color is like at a glaze consistency and I'll just apply it to the panels, trying to follow the, well, Rule of gravity, do I know that? Should I study that? Also, please remember that sometimes these effects uh, might look just bad in the pictures. And that's why it's very important to take good pictures. I've been sent these amazing lights from Elgato and they've been a game changer for taking my pictures. So maybe instead of buying the next two boxes, invest in some good lights instead. Although your model is now all grimed up, it doesn't mean that the paint job's done. You still have to do this one last thing. Which is point number four that's actually gonna allow people to see what's going on with your model. Just glancing at the model and being able to figure out what I'm looking at, to me it's pretty important. But how do you do that? Here I did it pretty simple. Oxide plus light orange for the Death Company model and black and light metallic paint for my regular Blood Angel. Uh, here you can be as careful and as precise as you wish. You can easily take this to display level like I'm doing with this Death Guard model I was painting to competition standard. I'm just defining the various parts of the model, making them readable. For this task, you normally use hedge highlights, but here we want a more weathered look. So instead, we're going to use chipping as edge highlights. An important note is that not every single edge has to be chipped. You'll still have to use regular hedge highlights to define the parts that are not chipped. Otherwise, the model will still look weird if it's controlled and carefully built up. Everything I said can be brought up to display standard, even if it's ground up. Before you go and paint everything green dark, here's a few extra tips for you. Number one, using the same old brush, you can add chipping to the decals with random stippling that add a very nice punch with very low effort. Number two, you can do the same thing with extra painted on elements, like what I'm doing here on these hazard stripes on the chainsword. Number three, you can use pigments on the base and on the feet of the model. It's gonna add detail and make it feel incorporated with the base. And number four, experiment with other mediums. Experiment with oils, experiment with liquid pigments and other stuff like that. Maybe it won't work for you, but maybe you feel better. I'm an acrylic kind of gal. What can I say? Stone me to death for that. There, now you know the truth about Grimdark. 
my truth at least. It's not a lazy technique, it requires a lot of problem solving, hopefully I helped out with that, and it can be brought up to display level. Still, you have one huge problem. In order to execute well all these steps, you need to know the secrets of dilution. Well, I have a video here that's going to help fix that. And it's going to give you a whole different perspective on a well-known technique. And see you there. Or you see past me there, not me in the present.